Hello, we are Team Zerosomorpheus and we will be presenting on the KDE tree data structure. Our team decided to work on this project since KDE trees are widely used because of their efficient algorithm and timing performance. This efficiency is possible because the space is divided into subsets and organized into left and right subtrees. There are two queries that take advantage of such property. The first one is a range search that searches for a point within the queried region. The second is the nearest neighbor search in which the closest neighbor to a point is found using the spatial deconstruction. These algorithms, along with the data structure, allow them to be applied into the computer graphics, neural networks, data mining, and data analysis. Here is an example of two-dimensional points added to a two-dimensional tree. The first point is inserted as the root of the tree, with the vertical orientation division shown in red. The next point is less than the root as it is added to the left subtree with a horizontal subdivision. This process is repeated until all the points are added to the KD tree. As seen in the final box, the space is subdivided into regions, enabling to easily find points within these regions and their neighbors. Implementing our KD tree turned out to be very similar to implementing a normal binary search tree. Just as in a regular binary search tree, the get, insert, and contains functions are recursive functions that will repeatedly search into the above or below subtree in order to find the correct location to either insert or access one of the points in the tree. The difference between this and a regular binary search tree is, of course, that there are multiple coordinates to check, and via the KD tree algorithm, the coordinate that's checked and compared against will alternate each time. So the first comparison against the root will always check the vertical coordinate, followed by the horizontal coordinate, and back and forth until the correct location is found. Uh, we decided to organize this code using a custom KD node class to maximize the readability of the code, and also implemented a few extra features that made it a bit easier to use. In particular, the KD tree class implements the iterable interface, giving an iterator that allows for in-order traversal of the tree. We also implemented a balancing algorithm that generates a balanced KD tree from a given list of points. This is important as it ensures O of log n performance for all functions, as if this wasn't the case and the trees weren't guaranteed to be balanced, it is possible that suboptimal cases can occur where the time is not generally logarithmic. When balancing the KD tree, it is important to note that there is an interesting edge case. Normally, if we look at this KD tree here, uh, the green node over here is a child of the middle green node, which is the root, and has a second child, which is this red node here. Normally, the children of the KD node will just get put into either the above or below subtree, depending on whether they're on the above or below side of the associated line. But what happens when the point is on the line? An arbitrary choice has to be made in order to make sure that the get and other recursive algorithms are capable of knowing which subtree this child is in. In this case, we'll make the arbitrary choice to call it above, so we'll move into this subtree here, and this is what we also chose to do in the code. Because a convention has to be chosen here, this can prevent a perfectly balanced KD tree if some points have equal coordinates. However, it will still be optimal, and in general, it will be very close to balanced. A major application of the KD tree is the nearest neighbor query. It works by walking down the tree to find where point P would have been inserted, and then unwinding the recursion in order to update the value of the current closest node. While doing so, it needs to determine whether we need to search in the other side of the tree for any candidates for a closer node, and in the end, return the closest one. Despite sounding like a very complex problem, it can be implemented in this few lines of code. This block over here is to figure out where the point would have been inserted, and is the same logic as any of the other uh, methods in the KD tree like insert or get. This is the recursive call, and once we clear the recursion, then we compare the current node with the closest we found in that subtree, and the main bit of insight is here with the perpendicular distance. So this is how we determine if we need to search the other side of the tree. As you can see here, currently we searched this subtree and the closest node was the root, but since the boundary distance, this distance from the point to the boundary, 
is smaller than the distance to the root, it's leaving this whole region for other points that can be closer to exist in the tree. So we must search this side. And if we find a node that is closer, we have to return that instead. In most cases, this recursive algorithm works in about uh, log time, which is much better than the brute force implementation. However, it is possible to force the nearest neighbor implementation to search every single node in a circle. Since all of the points are equidistant and all of the regions are very overlapping, when we put the point close to the center, it ends up having to search almost every subtree. Because of this, it devolves into just linear time. In addition to the KD structure, our team decided to develop an interactive GUI. This GUI is implemented using the Swing Java library. This allows our end user, in this case, Professor Heinemann and the TAs, to be able to run the GUI without having to install external libraries. We were inspired by the retro look of the old days. Therefore, we went for a retro neo theme. The layout of the GUI is simple and easy to use. It is divided into the control panel on the left, the two-dimensional space interactive window in the middle, and the information panels for the KD node displayed information on the most right. Now we will show you how to use the GUI. This is the KD tree visualizer. To use it, um, just click with your mouse on the draw window. This will add a node as you can see right here, and it will give you the information as the orientation of this node is vertical, the points, and the regions. Then you can add more nodes by just clicking on the GUI. And with this, you can also load all the nodes right here to see each point where they are located, their um, orientation, and the regions. Uh, it is important to notice that these are not in the order that they were inserted in, but they are in the order from left to right in the KD tree structure. Another cool feature that this uh, visualizer lets you do is put an X coordinate, like 200, and a Y coordinate, like 500, and it lets you find the nearest neighbor. Um, this is the point that we input it, and this is the nearest neighbor as follows. Um, also, you can clear, which will clear the window, the information panels, and it will reinitialize the KD tree. I'm going to be talking about the evaluation and the results of our data. First off, this is the worst case of our KD tree um, nearest neighbor query in the bottom right. And as you can see, the KD tree and the brute force time efficiency are very similar for the majority of the performance. And this happens when the points form sort of a circle and the nearest neighbor query has to search through more of the tree leading to more time efficiency. Uh, this is our time efficiency for the average for the nearest neighbor query um, in this column. And the brute force average is in this column here. And as you can see, the nearest neighbor time efficiency is much better for the majority of the data sets, um, as you can see, up to about 11, the brute force average actually kind of competes with it. And then it really pulls away after the data set size of two to the 11th. And it starts getting a lot bigger, as you can see by this graph right here.